Hi everybody, and thanks for tuning in again to another weekly wolf vlog. Today, we're going back into the series on beverage recipes. This series goes on to explain how to make certain drinks found on the menu, and also really breaks down the experience that the customer has with these beverages. So as the title suggests, we're gonna be first taking a look at the cappuccino. And throughout all these videos, the default cup size is going to be regular, but if there is a larger size, I will make sure to post the recipes for the large size drinks at the end of the videos. So let's take a look at what's involved in making a delicious cappuccino. First up, our cappuccinos are all made in a six and a half ounce porcelain bowl shaped cup. I'm going to be placing a double ristretto inside this cup and that is using a 20 gram dose to a 20 gram yield and I'm extracting that out in 16 to 20 seconds. After that, I'm going to be pouring milk into my jug, measuring it out, ensuring that I'm not using too much or too little milk. The aim is always going to be to 60 degrees plus or minus 5 degrees is the perfect temperature of the milk. Now, I want to stress with a flat white and latte in the previous videos, the milk was of a very similar consistency, but there is definitely a difference in how to make cappuccino milk. And that is, we're still aiming for a very wet and silky milk, but we want to stretch our milk a little bit further than we did on the flat white and lattes. And what this does is provide a thicker foam on top of your cappuccinos. So once I have milk steamed to 60 degrees, plus or minus five degrees, and my double ristretto shot, I'm going to dust chocolate on top of the espresso. This way, I'm able to add latte art to my cappuccino without having to dust the chocolate later on and cover up the latte art that I've created. Once you've dusted the chocolate into the espresso, I'm gonna be mixing in the milk slowly, making sure that I'm not sinking too much of that chocolate into the espresso. I'm gonna lift the crema dusted with chocolate high enough, about three quarters of the way to the top of the cup before I begin pouring my latte art. Once I get to three quarters of the way, I'll begin my latte art and then finish it nicely. It's really important to ensure a good amount of foam has ended up in the cup and you might find difficulty pouring good latte art with thick foam, but with practice at creating nice wet thick foam, your latte art will improve. Now, the flavor experience of a cappuccino, if you've ever tasted chocolate and espresso is just delicious. And I notice with every cappuccino I serve, the customer is always picking up that spoon on the side of the saucer and scooping that foam and chocolate off the top of the cup. So that's why I find it super important still to add foam with your cappuccino. And it goes back on the Italian version of the cappuccino, which is a third coffee, a third milk, and a third foam. So the cappuccino is one of the top three dominant drinks in the Australian market, alongside the flat white and the latte. However, I don't want to ignore the little people. Those children under the age of 10 who are not really drinking coffee at the moment, but nag their parents for a taste of their flat white or a latte. So what's been created in the industry is what's known as a baby chino or a fluffy. Now the baby chino has no coffee in it and essentially it's just steamed milk with a little bit of chocolate dusting on top. The key to making a really great baby chino is ensuring that the milk is not above 40 degrees. And that also, similar to the cappuccino style milk, it's well foamed and we're gonna add a little bit of chocolate on top. And occasionally, you'll find throughout a lot of cafes, there is also gonna be a marshmallow on the side. The little people in our lives can really influence where we might go to buy coffee, as they're the ones who really know where the best baby chinos are made. And they might certainly nag us all the way to that cafe that has the best baby chino. So I don't wanna discount the baby chino as a coffee on the menu, because it's a really still important drink that customers pay for and kids enjoy. So it's really important to get the baby chino done perfectly. Here at Wolf, we make all our baby chinos 
in a four ounce paper cup, dine-in or takeaway. That way, if they drop it onto the floor, you're not too concerned about it breaking uh, and anyone standing on any broken glass or so forth. So that's why the paper cup comes in really handy that way. Now I'm not gonna add the same amount of milk to my pitcher as I would to a normal beverage, only about half the amount. I'm gonna steam that rapidly and also adding a lot of volume really quickly to the milk. That way I'm ensuring that I don't go over and above 40 degrees. And if you're not sure about the temperature, make sure you use a thermometer on the milk before you serve it. 40 degrees would be my cutoff point. But you do also wanna make sure that you've got enough foam in the milk and you're not just handing them warmed up milk as it will easily spill. And also the kids, just like the adults, enjoy scooping that foam and chocolate off the top of their beverage. So I would say that rounds off the top four beverages found in Australia. The flat white, the latte, the cappuccino and the baby chino. And next time when we come back on beverage recipes, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the beverages that come without milk. That's all for this video. If you have any of the comments or any of your own experiences, please place them in the comments below. If you like our videos, hit subscribe, follow us. Thanks for watching again. See you next time.